Hi everybody, Ben here from Artless Ordinary. I am going to do a cloud kind of pour. So I've got a bunch of paints mixed up, but I've only got cloud paint in three of them. So the cloud paint I'm using is Deco Art Satin Enamels in pure white, which these three blues, which is cerulean blue, I know the name, Deep Cyan and Turquoise is 15 grams paint, 5 grams satin enamel, 40 grams Floetrol, and then I've added water to make it thin. So I've made it relatively thin, it leaves the tiniest little mound, but not much. Try to make them as even as I can with their consistency. Then I've got gold which has no satin enamel in it. It is just um, 20 grams paint, 40 grams Floetrol and some water added. And then I have my Phalo Blue, which is 70 grams paint, 210 grams Floetrol and then water added. And again, that's very thin. It's not really leaving much of a mound. It's kind of falling in straight away. So, this is what I have today. What I'm going to do is I am going to mix up my pour cup first and then I'm going to put a base coat onto the canvas. So with this, I'm going to put in um, probably about maybe a little bit more between a quarter and a third of the paint. I think that actually I might do tiniest little bit more. I haven't done one this size, so I'm still judging my paint amounts. Then with that, I'm going to pour the gold in, but I'm not going to pour the gold too heavy. The gold is kind of sinking. I want the gold to sit on top a little bit. Okay, now which blue should I go? I might actually go the deep cyan first. So I want to pull this a little bit higher so it sinks down in that one spot. Now I'm going to stop. I don't, I'm not going to scrape it because I don't want it to sit on top. Then I'm going to get the cerulean blue and pour that straight over the top of where we just poured. And then the turquoise. those three cups out of the way. I'm going to move this cup to the side while I put my base coat on. So give it a good stir, make sure it's all there. Let me just double check I am recording before I go too far. Yes, I am. Okay, now I just want to cover the canvas with this base coat. I'm not used to using this tool. I used it a while ago, but 
I found it was a bit harder to do the edges. Sometimes the edges are a little bit sunken on some of these canvases. Now I don't find this the easiest of tools to use. <laughs> I like my palette knife. It's easy to do. So this is a semi-transparent, so it will show up slightly. Um, I should have enough paint in my cup to actually make it so this isn't noticeable. You just want to have the canvas wet. I like to cover the sides just in case there's a little bit that doesn't get coated. Get in there. Sorry about this. just good if I show you the whole process you can always skip forward if you aren't interested in seeing the whole process but if you do get to see it then you know how I did it and it also helps me so if something turns out a little bit different to normal I can actually go back and have a look at what I did to see what difference I did that either created the effects that I was liking or disliking. Sorry, my head's getting in the way. Now I'm going to try and even out this paint. I think I need a smaller spreader. Okay, so let me just wipe that here. Got, I brought this good spreader so I can take it to the sink and give it a good scrub without bending it out of shape. Now, have my gloves ready but I'm not going to use them put them on just yet so can you see reactions already happening in the cup that's because the satin enamel is coming to the surface now we want to pinch the cup so it's a bit of a spout and I'm going to do a pour but I might slightly ring pour it at the same time
So see how those little bits sat on top? That's what happens when it doesn't go so deep. It's more when it becomes a straight pour than a dirty pour. But that should be fine. So now we just have to let this settle into itself. So what we need is we need cells, our pearls or clouds, whatever we want to call them, to start coming up already. So you need to let it just relax because as you can see, they're already coming up, but you want more to happen. I am going to get my blowtorch out and give it a quick little um, pop of all those bubbles. This is one time you would rather pop the bubbles earlier than later. So I'm just going to quickly go over the whole canvas. Making sure I've got bubbles out of everything. we go so we can see reactions and stuff happening in there which is perfect this line the darker ring is always going to sit there I'm not going to be able to change that because it's what happens when the paint sits on top instead of going down as a dirty pour you can stop the paint from coming out the cup before that happens um, just by not pouring out, once this cup gets a little bit low, like probably about one eighth or one tenth, you gotta stop it. Now the main thing with this is, we have to make this paint move around a lot. The more this paint moves around, the more cells, clouds, whatever are going to form. And take it easy. Don't rush it. So don't let the paint hit the edge of the canvas either. Once it hits that edge of the canvas, it's going to be stuck there. When we want this to move around. And we don't want it to roll over itself too much. So up here, I'm going to go very slow because I don't want these cells to actually disappear. I want them to stay on top. And the other paint to move over. So I probably could have had a slightly thicker base coat. Like I said, I was still learning the consistencies a little bit with this. So we're just making it glide.
I don't really care if that ring stays as a ring. That wasn't my goal. My goal was just to have the paint on the canvas, but I thought instead of doing just a straight pour, if I did a ring, it would come out a little bit more different. So again, just continue to move the paint around. And then hopefully more cells will keep appearing the more it keeps rubbing or more effects I'm going to call them. Okay, now my back isn't going to allow me to stand too much longer because when you do this, my table could be tiniest little bit higher. So what I'm going to do is I am going to start going over the edges. So we're going to come up this way. close, go over the edge, come back. Now I'm going to go up this way. So we're going up to this corner and across the top at the same time. And we're going to go over and come back. I'm bringing it all the way back down to the center and then I'm coming across and down because I need this blue as well as the corner gone. So we've got paint getting closer to the edge and then I'm going to come down the same time and I'm going to go over the corner and that side at the same time so over and then bringing it back now this last one it's going to be a little bit more of a challenge because I got two sides to still go over so let's go down across the bottom here first Try and keep it even. Don't need to go over much, just enough to coat, cover the canvas. So it's starting to over there, I'm sliding it down. Uh, I'm going to lose too much paint, so I'm bringing it back up to the center. And then I'm swirling it around a little bit to the side. Where I want to try and do this side and the bottom corner. So we just need a fair bit of paint to come over here. I know this is a lot slower than normal, but it needed to be a little bit more controlled. So we're getting close. Now we want to come down a little bit. And I'm going to go over a bit. Over. And down. Okay, now. I haven't got that one patch right up there. So I'm going to bring the paint up. And 
on a slight little angle tilt. Now I can see the paints here. Just need to push a tiny little bit off. Over and then bring back. I'm just going to double check. Right there, there was one spot I could see. So double check your corners now. I'm just grab paint from the underneath and just rub it onto that very corner part. Kind of just pressing it up onto it, not really doing too much. Now, let's come back down, stretch out everything a little bit more. these down to this corner. I think I could probably take a little bit more off the base just to even out the artwork a little bit more. That should be it. Also by doing that I think it's going to create more of these cells or pearls, clouds, I'm really not 100% sure what I'm calling them yet. Okay, let me just place this down so I can stand upright. My back gets a bit sore when you lean forward, so I'm going to have to get an adjustable height painting table. But this is actually looking pretty cool. I do have a lot more cloud cells, especially all down this side and across the top few over here, not too much over there. I don't know if I want to stretch them too much more because to get to this corner, because then these will start going out of shape a little bit. Let me see if I can. Where's the paint? The paint's in the middle there. If I do it slower, there's less chance of them going out of shape, but also the more paint you tilt off, the more likely you are going to start stretching them too much. So we're just taking it slow. Now it's starting to move close to that corner. All right, it's going over. Now we're going to come back. So hopefully tilting off that little bit more paint is going to stretch all these out and make this area want to sell up. Bringing our paint back to the center. It's one of these artworks you've got to watch every part of the canvas at the same time to make sure that you aren't disfiguring any part of it while trying to get effects in another part. I'm going to leave it like that. I hope I'm still in camera for you guys. Sometimes when I put the canvas back down, it's not precisely where it was when I started. Awesome. Look how cool this is. So the gold isn't very heavy in there, but it is, is, it is in there. Sorry, my mouth isn't working today. Didn't sleep the best, I'm a bit tired. But you can see the gold is kind of streaked through in bits and pieces. It stayed close to the dark blue, which is what I wanted it to do. I wanted it to sit with the blue and kind of create these effects where the darker blue is, you've got the gold areas, and then you've got these different colored blue um, clouds that have come up, which are in the shape of 
cells, pebbles. Um, I like the pebble shapes of them. So they're not completely round. Some are, but they kind of look like a river stone. A lot of them are following the dark blue, running through. But I like this. It doesn't have an actual feel of anything in particular. It's just an abstract artwork with all these different effects that have come through, which is what I was wanting. Wasn't 100% sure what I was going to get by doing this. I wanted clouds, but I didn't want those. Uh, I wanted different clouds. I wanted more cells than clouds as such, which is what I've got here. This may still develop more as I leave it. So one thing with um, using like satin enamel or the extreme sheen type of paints, the cells and the clouds can still develop in time as it's kind of drying or <clears throat> doing its thing. But what we do want to do is we want to scrape the sides because we don't want any more paint running off. We've got the effects that we want. We've got the composition that we want. So now we're going to do this, which stops the process of paint pulling off paint. Might have done that side. <laughs> so with this now, I'm going to pause it and let it settle into itself and see what happens. <clears throat> Pardon me. So we're going to let it settle in, see if these cells, pearls, um, develop more. That sometimes they swell more, create more effects. As they do that, they push the other paints into each other a little bit more. I'm loving it. I'm super happy. And also, what you need to do is come back every couple of minutes and just check that more paint isn't dripping off the edges. If it is, scrape it again. Keep doing that until you notice that no more paint is coming off and then your artwork's not gonna alter too much more. So I'm gonna step in front and pause the camera. All right, I'm back. So, I don't know if a lot changed. It's hard to tell sometimes when you walk away and then come back. I have had to scrape the edges another um, one more time and it looks like that is about it. It's not going to drip anymore. But awesome. Super happy with all these cloud cells. Um, really, really fun to do. The initial circle that was in the middle, as you can see now, has squashed itself into these little kind of rivers of color, but not really jumping out. I've got some rings happening over here and lots of little bubbles or cells in all different places. The main section will be running through here and then kind of splits off that way and splits off over here. Really, really happy. So I am going to do more different types of these using different colors, um, maybe adjust my consistency and see what differences I get. That's the fun part, is just mixing it up a little bit and just seeing if you get something a bit different to normal or whether it stays the way that you want. I just dropped a piece of hair. Can I get it without altering the picture? Yes. So that's the one thing you've got to be careful of, not altering the picture too much. If you're doing too much trying to dig it out, then don't worry about digging it out. That looks like the only thing I've got. So I'm going to bring you down for a close-up. Okay, here we go. So this is a 12, no, 16 by 20 canvas. So it's bigger than my normal canvas. Um, I wanted one a bit larger. As you can see, you've got lots and lots of cells happening through it. Sorry about the ring light just off to the, the side here. Can I kind of cover it with my arm a little bit? So you've got a couple of rings happening, one off to the right hand side and down at the bottom. It just gives it a little bit more different interest. Let's get closer. 
as you can see, tons and tons of effects. There's the gold. It doesn't shimmer as much in the camera. It will more when it dries. Going up with a whole bunch more. Ranging from this corner, coming down. So, camera went a bit fast then. Over here, more different interests. So we've got dark patches. So we've got turquoisey. We've got the phalo blue that's in here. We've got cerulean blue and deep cyan. But I'm really, really happy with this. I think this has turned out pretty much how I would like it to be. Um, but I wasn't 100% sure what effects I was going to get. So let me know what you think. And like, comment. Um, if you like this video, share the video. It helps me out. More people get to see it. And then um, hopefully... I, it grows my channel because people were subscribed because they've seen it. So thanks very much, everyone. That helps me out. I hope you enjoyed this and we will come back for another pour very, very soon. So have a great evening and I'll see you soon. Bye.